There are a ton of things to do and explore in Elden Ring, from caves to catacombs, boss fights, and plenty other random things that you can find along the way, so it makes sense that you might have missed some things along your journey in the lands between. Here are 12 things in Liurnia that you might have missed your first time around. Raya and the Black Guard to find Raya, you'll want to go to this location in Liurnia. Once you're there, you'll see a structure with a statue inside. Inside that structure will be Raya. You want to have a conversation with her where she'll tell you that she needs a necklace. Once that conversation is finished, you'll want to head to the Poil Bronze Shack and find a man outside by the Greys. Once you begin your conversation with the man, you start to realize he may not be so friendly and that you'll need to settle this your own way to get the necklace from him if you've got an iron chin like chris rock you shouldn't have any problem taking the hits from this enemy and once you defeat the black guard you'll get an assortment of things from him the most important being raya's necklace you'll then want to return back to raya and return her necklace to her where she will then give you a volcano manor invitation in return death bird some of you may have already stumbled upon this while exploring, but there is a boss that is located just outside of the Poilbron Shack on the southeastern side. Once you're at this rock, you'll get a surprise from the sky in the form of the Death Bird. And like most bosses in this game, if you're running a magic build, you'll be able to make quick work of it. Just be careful because this boss is quick and honestly not the most pleasant to look at. I mean, it is named the Death Bird after all. Once defeated, you'll get a red feathered branch sword that raises attack power when your HP is low. Thops. As demonstrated by the Death Bird, magic in this game is very, very useful. If you head to the Church of Erith, you'll find an NPC by the name of Thops that sells spells such as the Glintstone Pebble and Glintstone Arc, and will also have some very interesting things to tell you. Stillwater Cave. Caves in this game are usually worth exploring. In the Stillwater Cave, you can find a sage outfit as well as a winged sword insignia. To get to the cave is a little bit tricky. First, you'll want to head to the lake facing Cliff's Grace, and then, with great teamwork between you and Torrent, you'll want to carefully, I want to reiterate that, carefully make your way down the cliffs. One wrong move, and you'll be collecting your runes at the top again. Once you're able to make it down to the bottom, you'll need to maneuver through the jellyfish until you find the cave entrance. Do what you do in caves in this game and explore and try not to die and eventually you'll find this room with the sage outfit. Explore some more and you'll find the boss, the clean rot knight awaiting you. Just be careful with this boss because the poison buildup that can accrue while you're moving about can be the biggest challenge in this fight. Once you are victorious, you'll be rewarded with the Winged Sword Insignia, which raises attack power with successive attacks. Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear Crystal Tears can be mixed in the flask of wondrous physic that will help enhance your character here in Elden Ring. This specific Crystal Tear, the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear, can be found very close by the Boil Prawn Shack on the southwest side. There are a few goofy looking enemies you'll have to clear out, but once you've done that, this crystal tier will be waiting for you, and when you use it, you'll get a temporary dexterity boost in your mixed physic. The Cliff Bottom Catacombs To find the Cliff Bottom Catacombs, you'll want to start at the Grace at Liurnia Highway South and head north from there. It can be a bit tricky, so make sure that you're paying attention to which way we are going. You'll also, in advance, need a stone sword key to fully explore here, so if you don't have one, make sure to go get one. Once you find the double doors that lead to the catacombs, similar to the caves, you'll want to explore around. Behind the stone sword key is the Nox Mirror Helm. Just be careful of these little gargoyles because they are very annoying and they sneak up on you. Just whatever you do, don't let that distract you from how bright and absolutely shiny this helmet is. Next, you'll find a hallway with a rather large, angry enemy guarding the next item you'll want to get, which is the Page Ashes. Once you're able to defeat this large, angry enemy, you will get the Page Ashes, which, if you don't know, these are a summon that can definitely help you in battle. 
The final item you'll get in the Cliff Bottom Catacombs is the Caden Cell Sword Ashes, which is another summon. You'll get these after defeating the Erd Tree Burial Watchdog boss. This boss is rather routine, but just like any enemy in this game, you can't underestimate it. So take the time, learn the moves, figure out when to attack, all that good Elden Ring stuff, and before you know it, you'll have this final item. Two Fingers Heirloom. Talismans in Elden Ring can be a fantastic addition to your arsenal. It'll make your characters stronger and more powerful than they already are and can help break the barrier between you wielding certain weapons. The Two Finger Heirloom is a talisman here in Elden Ring. This particular talisman raises your faith by five, which like we previously mentioned, depending on what build or weapons you're running could be very important. To get this heirloom, you'll want to head to the Purified Ruins. It will have some enemies, so beware. We found it easy to just sneak our way inside until we found the wood floor that you'll need to break through. Make your way down the staircase, open the door, and voila! In the chest will be the Two Fingers Heirloom. The Night Cavalry. You've more than likely come across this area many times while exploring the lands between. But if you haven't come across it at nighttime, then you never know that there is actually a boss fight here. This boss can be tricky, but since we've got the glorious power of magic on our side, it was honestly pretty light work. You'll get the Ash of War Ice Spear for defeating the Knight's Cavalry, a nifty little move that looks awesome and is also effective. Having a cool little wind up animation before impaling your enemies with an ice blade which is not too bad for something that we probably would have missed. The Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook and the Karian Glint Blade Staff. Head to the Highway Lookout Tower. Make your way through these enemies, yes, it's okay to just run through them, and head up the first ladder. Inside the first chest will be the Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook, which will give you the ability to craft an Albanaric pot. Then head up the next ladder, Knock this goofy looking double Burger King face having guy off the tower, asserting your dominance, and then retrieve the Karian Glint Blade Staff from the body. Yes, it, it truly is that simple. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The Death Right Bird. Head south of the Grace at Gate Town North. Here you'll find a sunken village. You'll also find another surprise in the form of the Death Bird's cousin, the Death Right Bird who isn't very happy with how easily you defeated his family. This fight has an amazing aesthetic with the white flames that cut through the fog of the land, but don't let this distract you though, because this boss, like most bosses in this game, will be difficult if you underestimate it. Take your time, learn its moves, and figure out the perfect times to attack. If you need to, use your summons, and if you have the ability to keep your distance in this fight, it will make it much easier for you. Once defeated, you'll get the Ancient Death Rancor spell, which by the way looks as awesome as it sounds and also deals great damage. It completely engulfs your enemies and stops them in their tracks. And if there's anything that we've learned so far in this video, it's that magic is unbelievably powerful in this game. The Ash of War Shield Bash. Head to the East Gate Bridge Trestle. You want to look for scarabs on the ground that are glowing white. These should be fairly simple to spot considering it's very foggy here so the white really stands out. Once you see the scarab, you'll want to destroy it then immediately look for the second one. Once you find the second one, destroy it as quickly as possible. Once you do, you'll get the Ash of War Shield Bash as a reward. This move can be wonky at first, but once you figure out the distance and the timing, excuse the joke I'm about to make, but you'll be slapping fools with your shield like you're, well, you know, Will Smith. <laughs> Smithing stone, miner's bell bearing, and the crystal knife. For this, you'll wanna head to this point on the map. It should be right across from a walking mausoleum. You wanna find an entrance that leads to an elevator. This elevator takes you down into the Rhea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Explore inside the tunnel. Do what you do in Elden Ring and take out some bad guys and you'll find this chest that contains the Crystal Knife. It's got an awesome animation that really makes it stand out. Explore some more and you'll stumble upon the Crystallian boss fight. 
This boss has a very unique moveset that does serious damage. So once again, make sure you take the time to learn her moves. If you need to, once again, call in your summons to keep her distracted while you deal damage and stay persistent. Once defeated, you'll receive the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing, which you can then take to the Twin Maidens in the Round Table Hold. This will give you the ability to buy the level 2 smithing stones from them, which can be incredibly useful if you don't want to go exploring for them. So those are 12 things that we thought you might have missed in the Liurnia zone here in Elden Ring. If there's anything you think we missed, help out your fellow Tarnished and let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed or found something useful, consider liking and subscribing for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one.